name is Craig Dallas, and I live uh, 17 miles uh, west of Tatum and 55 miles east of Roswell, out on the ranch. I was born in, born in Roswell, New Mexico, uh, 1955, and lived on the ranch there for 18 years, going to, uh, to high school at Tatum, New Mexico. Uh, this is the story of C.E. and May Dallas, and it's, just, it's told uh, by the youngest child, Jody Dallas, which is my dad. My, grand Mary, grand, my grandmother, Mary Ellen Bevel Dallas, was a true pioneer. Before coming to New Mexico, Granny Dallas lived in Abilene and Rotan, Texas. My grandpa, Reuben T. Dallas, left Granny and took their oldest son, Otis, with him to Ardmore, Oklahoma. In order to keep her family uh, together, Granny washed and scrubbed clothes on a rub board for the public and farmed in Rotan, Texas. She sent my dad, Clarence, to Drawn's Business College in Abilene, Texas to earn a business degree. The Dallas family, Granny and her sons, Harry, Clarence, and Hayden, came to New Mexico in wagons pulled by teams with their possessions. They filed their claims in 1910 and homesteaded in Lee County before New Mexico became a state. Since they had come from dry land cotton farming in Texas, Fisher County, they felt like their, the new land was a paradise with its good tall grass. After filing this claim, my dad Clarence went back to Texas to court his soon-to-be bride, my May Amy Thomas. My mom said Clarence fell in love with her when she was wearing a turquoise dress. After they married, they stayed in Texas and worked the Dallas farm until their first child, Marshall Thomas Dallas, was born in 1913, and they decided to lease the farm and move to New Mexico and raise their family alongside the other Dallas family members. They moved to New Mexico with a small herd of Hereford cattle and built a half dugout to live in it at Caprock. They later acquired state lease land to expand the ranching activities. My dad's business training came in handy when they, Harry, Clarence, and Hayden formed a partnership called the Dallas Brothers. Clarence kept the books this partnership lasted approximately three to five years and was later dissolved when the brother, brothers started having children. My uncle Harry married Cora Edwards and raised 11 children in, at Caprock. My uncle Hayden never married. He and Granny sold their claim in Lee County and then moved to acquire land in the Pecos Valley near Roswell. Roswell was the closest town where supplies could be purchased. Every three to four months, Clarence and Harry would, would freight supplies, not only for their families, but for nearby neighbors as well. The trip was 55 rugged miles one way by wagon and took approximately five days. They would spend the first night at Red Tip Mill on the Ellie Ranch. This was halfway to Roswell. The second and third night was spent in the wagon yard after shopping for supplies and loading the wagons was completed. The fourth night found them back at the red tip mill and the fifth night found them home getting to sleep in their own beds again. In 1926, shortly after Highway 380 was completed from Tatum to Roswell, Clarence and May moved their house to the road. They then purchased a store from the family named Robinson and opened the Dallas Cash Grocery. The wagons were once again used to keep the store stocked with supplies. Clarence store merchandise included everything from a Model T radiator cap to hand cut chewing tobacco. Getting back to the good tall grass, it did not last. Because of the drought of the 1920s and 30s, during the, the mid-30s, the U.S. government came in and shot the starving cattle and paid my dad so much for us since uh, we did not have feed for our cattle or money to buy the feed to, to feed with. Our cows were too poor for the butcher and too poor for eating. 
some criticized the president, FDR, for doing this, but I guess it was a crapshoot either way. Good for some and bad for others. After I got married, I worked the ranch and had a job with El Paso Natural Gas Company. My wife, Edith, and I raised our two children on the ranch, uh, Elaine and myself, along with uh, uh, where, just like I was raised, along with my three brothers and sister. I'm glad my dad and mom stayed in Lee County because I got to enjoy the beautiful sunsets and the good wet years. We celebrated our 100 year anniversary on July 17, 2010, with a barbecue and a special plaque presentation commemorating the occasion. My son Craig is the third generation to live and work on the Homestead Ranch. He still uses the brand that my mom made designed. It was a flag master brand, 01081. She said it was a tribute to our great country, the United States. Of America, oh, uh, the, it still has. Uh, we switched from the Hereford cattle to uh, to a Red Angus type brand, uh, but uh, I, I'm, I'm currently leasing it to a, another rancher out there, Joel Klein. Okay. Um, well, I think it's it's about the best way that you can grow up as a as a as a kid uh, to learn to to do the chores, to learn the value of the dollar and learn the value of being uh, being a rancher's kid. Uh, you also learn a lot of lot of things about life itself. Uh, uh, how to how to to work get an work an honest get an honest day's pay and uh, pretty hard work. Get up early and and work late. Well, it means getting up early and milking the cow and and the and sometimes the cow kicks the bucket over and then you have to wash it out and try to get a little bit of milk anyway come back to the house whether your mother and your dad pretty mad at you and it also and then it also means uh, uh, digging a lot of post holes and fixing a lot of corrals and fixing a lot of things that the cattle break because they're real destructive they even get up and rub against the barn and will will knock the side of the barn in so then you have to fix that well uh, of course the first 18 years I helped help right. my dad uh, do everything uh, then I Moved away, went to college, got a, got an accounting degree, and I worked pretty much uh, about 30 years doing that. Even here at Lee County at the at the Lovington Refinery, and even in the Artesia Refinery later. Uh, but I always came back and helped him do his branding and and uh, work when he when he needed a hand. <laughs> so, but it was it's it's a good life. Perhaps. Well, they used that covered wagon that I talked about to bring to bring their possessions over, and they'd load that up with uh, with cow chips, the dried ones, and they'd load that up, and they bring they brought that in for firewood because in New Mexico there is no wood, no firewood. So they burned that to cook their meals with. They used it to heat their homes with, and it was an important part of of surviving. They also had to bale bear the 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 uh, I call it bear grass, but it's those uh, the yucca plant, oh. so that uh, because they and they'd bail that for the cattle to eat because sometimes even even after the 30s there's still been a lot of lean years where they had the cattle had to eat that for feed, so right. so they had to they used all kinds of uh, of course coal coal oil lamps and uh, for lighting and you know it's a different world in the fact that you can't work late. Uh, because the, when the lights go out, the sun, you have to, to call it a day and go in. Now you have lights you can set up and keep working, and lots of ways uh, we've, we've added more uh, trouble to ourselves with electricity by being able to work longer and harder as a human being than they had to. But they had to do a lot of things the old way and the hard way. When you drill, the, uh, drill a hole in a... In a fence post to, or to put a to put a board on it for your corrals you had to do it with a hand drill and so we've got some of those old hand drills out at the ranch that we've kind of refurbished and got them working again so but it's quite hard to do those hand drills when you're drilling into the drilling into the wood we had a uh, milk house that still stands we had the water from the windmill ran through we had a pipe to get after it came out of the windmill, went into the milk house, into a trough, and that's where they kept their 
milk in that cold water running across it. About, it's about 50 degrees. It's not real cold, but it's, it's a lot colder than the temperature outside. Uh, it would keep the milk from uh, longer, mm -hmm. so it wouldn't ruin. And uh, then, it would, then they'd route it through the trough and on into the tank that we used to water the livestock with. Well, and we had, uh, early on, we had sheep as well. We had sheep and cattle, probably like, I'm thinking 200 head of, of sheep and about, about 30 cattle. But in lean years, we had to cut that back because the sheep would just, they get that grass so close to the ground, it doesn't leave anything for the cattle to eat. So you kind of have to pair the sheep back when, you're, when your rainfall is not quite as good. So they, we did both sheep and cattle and had, had horses as well. One thing that they like to do, and I did too, is, is to go out to this tank that where we originally homesteaded, there were some old cottonwood trees and that, that are still there. So it provided a pretty good shade in the, in the hot summer months. We'd go out there and we'd swim in that old tank. And uh, it was kind of like going to a, to a big lake with trees around it because, you know, we had tr the big cottonwood trees for shade. and It was pretty nice for, for swimming. My dad told one story when they were both down, they decided they were out there working and, uh, and they just, the, this is before, when they moved their house up to the ranch away from the dugout. And they were down there and they decided to just take all their clothes off and go skinny dipping. And, 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 uh, and then a little lightning storm came up and the lightning started popping all around them. So, so he was so scared, he just got out of that tank and ran all the way about a half a mile to the house without a stitch of clothes on. <laughs> so, and he'd always have, on the, on, in July, he'd always have a 4th of July party and they'd have watermelons and they'd have games and uh, roping and, and all kinds of things there uh, at, the, at the gathering. And they'd have uh, whatever, meet, people would bring meat and whatever to the, to the gathering. And so that's why we had our 100th year anniversary in July to kind of commemorate those parties that he used to have for the whole community. Uh, Harry Dallas, my 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 CE Dallas, my granddad's uh, brother, lived about a mile south of us on the place that he had homesteaded, and a lot a lot of times the kids would walk that mile back and forth to to, to just kind of play and and tell and uh, do things together, and that kind of made it a little bit better, I guess, as far as fun things they used to do. Uh, there's a little farming around Tatum, and uh, but mostly ranching at that uh, early on in those times. Mm -hmm. They had a school out there called Soldier Hill, and that's where they they it was just a school that like the first through the eighth grade, mm -hmm. might have even been through more than that. But uh, that's where all the kids went, uh, and it was probably I'd say five miles from our our ranch. Yeah, our neighbors were the the Colliers. Uh, and later after that, the, the Grams brought, bought the Collier Ranch. And uh, so we, we, uh, we also had a small church out there, Cap Rock Baptist Church. That, that, uh, but also they had a Soldier Hill Church too. I think it was a school, and they had church there as well. So that's where a lot of people gathered in the, on Sundays, of course, to, to fellowship together and to talk about the, talk about the week and so forth. Uh, they, they did get together quite a bit and help when they had a branding or something to, to gather the cattle and then to do the branding with. It was the most wholesome life ever. And I know as kids, my brother and I, we didn't have a lot of activities. So we made our own fun. We, uh, we made things out of wood. We, I made him play dolls with me for 30 minutes and then I had to play trucks with him. Uh, we learned to work together and we learned to fight together and and I think that's why we are still so close is that we had such an amazing bond. And um, mom and dad, uh, they, they taught us to be good Christian people and uh, and that's one of the most important things. They did teach us to appreciate the land and that, that God was our source. And I do remember that 
you know, you've heard the saying, when mama's happy, everybody's happy. Well, it goes the same with a father. Um, the clouds would gather, and he would get so excited, you know, possible rain. Oh, yes. When you always needed rain, I remember. And we prayed for rain. And when the clouds passed us by, he would get very upset. And we had to learn to walk around very quietly while he calmed down. <laughs> Do you remember that? I mean, we just didn't hardly talk about the kids. That's, that was a big one. And fortunately, we got to live right next door to our grandparents. I mean, that couldn't be any better. better. Um, but she would tell us that she would plant a tree but she had to carry a bucket of water to put on that tree. So mm -hmm. everything that was green was worked for. And I do remember drinking out of the, the our windmill would come into a little barrel. big barrel. Mm -hmm. And that was the best tasting cold water right out of the ground. And we would always have to have a couple of sips there every day. When we were working on windmills several times, my and we had neighbors or, or some of our cousins would come, my dad would tell them, well, yeah, we, we ice pack that windmill every, every evening so that, so that that well will be that cold. And then they said, where do you it. put the ice down? <laughs> and we also float but our it's watermelons just, uh, in there to chill them. Yeah. Right? And it would mm -hmm. just float. We couldn't wait to get there. Also, the... We looked at the wagon uh -huh. out there. Um, our wagon fell apart, mm -hmm. but my sister-in-law, Pam, got this great idea and took the wood and from the wagon and made each one of the grandkids a special little hanging monument. Some put our flag on our mm -hmm. brand on it, and some still had the hardware and. Uh, she was quite, uh, quite clever <laughs> in thinking that up. It's pretty special. Mine's hanging on my wall right now. That's and you can see the giant cottonwood trees that some are not yeah, they're, alive. They're, uh -huh. they're dying, but they were massive trees. Massive. And the love branch has and broken. the love branch. In fact, the love branch was where uh, my dad proposed to my mother. And so we always called it the love Mm -hmm. And see, on the 100-year anniversary, we took pictures. We had them sitting there and took pictures yes, around. Yes, just gave me two. Oh, that's <laughs> wonderful. Well, great stories, and thank you again. Anything else you want to say? Any kind of parting words that you'd like us to talk about? We're thankful to uh, Lee County, and we're thankful to the state of New Mexico, the Commissioner of Public Lands, and our partnership of, of leasing the land from them and, uh, to allow us to ranch on it. Thankful to... The Almighty God. That's <laughs> And all of his blessings. That's right.